Jumbo Bio 6611. In this lecture, we will talk about the one-way analysis of variance. We'll first introduce the concept in a motivating data example, make some connections to the linear regression models we've been working with previously, and then discuss an extension to a case where the assumption of equal variances may be violated. What's the motivation for doing an analysis of variance, or an ANOVA? Well, the big reason we may be interested in using it is that we want to compare the means of j different groups, where j could be any number greater than or equal to 2. We can generally think of it as an extension of the independent sample's t-test, which assumes equal variances. And in this lecture, we'll introduce some specific methods on how we can conduct this test for multiple groups, and also draw those connections to the regression model. Before we do that, though, the motivating example we will use is this infant birth weight in pounds and smoking status of the mother during the first trimester. We see here we have j equal to 4, where we have our four different groups for non-smoking, former smoker, light smoker, and heavy smoker, where non is a never smoking group. We see that we have the average birth weight and the variance for each birth weight estimated from the sample at the bottom of the column, where we see that the non-smoking birth weight and the former smoking birth weight are both around 7 to 7.5 pounds for at the average, the light smoking birth weight decreases to 6.33, and the heavy smokers have the lowest birth weight in our sample. We can also visualize this with a series of our box plots here we see at the right hand side, where we do see that generally decreasing trend in the median, in this case for the box plot, of our means that we noted numerically before. So how can we formally evaluate if these four groups have a different mean birth weight? Well, there's multiple formulations or ways of specifying a one-way ANOVA model, but one common way is what's known as an effects model. In this case, we have our outcome yij, which will be the ith observation of the jth group. As we might have noted on the previous slide, the groups had different sample sizes. We then have some additional terminology to define based on this model specification, where yij will be equal to mu, the grand mean. It's a constant that represents just the overall mean of our entire data set plus alpha j, which will be another constant we estimate from our data that represents the difference between the mean of our jth group of interest and that grand mean, which can also be thought of as our between group differences. One of our restrictions in this model is that they must sum up to zero. Much like in our simple linear regression framework or a regression model, we discussed how we could optimize those models to identify some fit. We then, like on our regression framework, add an error term, epsilon ij. This represents that random error about the group mean, or mu plus alpha j for our given jth group, for each individual observation in that group, or the within group differences. Each group will then have n sub j observations, where capital N will represent the total number of observations we have for our entire study. Like regression, we have a few assumptions to make for the one-way ANOVA. They specifically are independence, homoscedasticity, and normality. Independence assumes that the samples are randomly and independently drawn from their respective populations. Homoscedasticity is that same assumption from regression where we assume the variances of each of our populations are the same. And then normality is assuming that each population is normally distributed, or we can think of it as well as the errors follow that normal distribution, which we have here epsilon sub ij is approximately normal with some variance sigma squared, which corresponds to our distribution for our observations y sub ij being normally distributed with mu plus alpha j for the mean and sigma squared for its variance.
One thing we can note briefly, which will draw a direct connection to our previous discussion of partitioning the variance in our regression model, is that we can divide up the sums of squares in this case as well with a slightly different terminology for what we're focusing on. Here we will have between and within group variability, as we saw a few slides ago. We can then calculate the similar sums of squares where we have that total sums of squares represented or partitioned into a between and a within component. Again, we have some addition, additional notation introduced where y double bar will represent that grand mean of our overall sample. y bar sub j is that group specific uh, sample mean. And then we'll calculate y sub ij as our individually observed observations. Again, this corresponds to our regression framework where we had the sums of square model instead of the between and the sums of square error instead of the within sums of squares. Once we partition the variance, it's helpful because we can then use the same idea to conduct an overall f-test to compare if our groups have the same mean. And this is where we actually get the eponymous ANOVA table terminology. On the screen here we see we've written it here with our connection of the between and within sources of our variability, but put it in terminology for our ANOVA context. We see the similar steps are applied where we have the F test or F statistic is the ratio of our mean square estimates for the between and within variability. We see here that our degrees of freedom will be J minus one for the between and capital N minus J for the within. And those of course will then come to play here with our degrees of freedom for our statistic that we're comparing to. The formal test that we are going to explore in the context of ANOVA can be stated in terms of the null hypothesis that all of our alpha sub j's are equal to zero, with the alternative being that at least one is not equal to zero. Many times though I think it's a little more intuitive to think of it as we have down here below, where if we set mu sub j to be equal to that grand mean plus that deviation from the grand mean for each group, we really have a summary then of the mean for each group mu sub j. There we can test the null hypothesis that all of our means are equal, mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2 equals up to mu sub capital J, and the alternative hypothesis would be that at least one of those means is different. For example, at least one of our mean birth weights is not like the others. We'll see some examples here in R, but I want to provide some code both in SAS and R for how we can conduct this. One of the nice ways in SAS, and there's many ways in both to do this, but you can use the PROC ANOVA um, procedure here and specify our group variable as a, with our class statement, the model we're interested in fitting, and even request things like the means we have in our group to have some idea of those comparisons if we haven't already calculated those summary statistics. In R, there's also a few different ways we can do it. Um, one of the ways that's the most analogous, and we'll see is more useful for the future section of this lecture is to use the oneway.test function where we can specify we want to assume the variances are equal as the, is the assumption for our one-way ANOVA for the standard approach. So let's assume that we fit that one-way ANOVA with equal variances and we use the oneway.test function. We see on the slide here the output that comes from the model given our data. So let's take a second to pause and write down the hypotheses we're testing in the context of our problem and the conclusion, and then we'll walk through them together. Okay, so let's walk through what our hypotheses are in this specific context. Again, I think one of the most useful ways is to think of it in terms of the group mean. So we might see something like mu, the mean for our never smokers, is equal to the mean for our former smokers, which is equal to the mean for our light smokers, which is equal to the mean for our heavy smokers. The alternative then would be that at least one mu sub j is different. Now looking at the actual results, we see it calculates the F statistic based on our data. It tells us what our degrees of freedom are for our reference value for that F distribution. And it also provides us with the P value we can interpret. Since P equals 0.014 is less than 
we will conclude that we reject H naught. In other words, at least one group mean is different. So with that, we can look at how we can extend this or make the connection to ANOVA in the setup of a linear regression model. We've already seen in our previous lectures that the linear regression model and linear regression framework is extremely flexible, and we'll see it's even more flexible in the coming weeks. In fact, we can actually recreate this one-way ANOVA and our results in the regression framework without actually having to use those ANOVA formulations. And we can do so by specifying indicator variables for our given context. For example, in our four-group context for the mom smoke variable, we may wish to specify the never smoker or the non-smoker group as our reference category. And then we'll introduce three indicator or dummy variables where for former smokers it will be equal to 1 and 0 for everyone else. Um, for XF, for a light smoker, XL will be equal to 1 but 0 for everyone else. And finally for heavy smokers, X sub H will be equal to 1 but 0 for every other category. That way with each person or observation in our data set, we can identify which group they belong to with the information from X sub F, X sub L, and X sub H. We can then write this in terms of our regression model framework as we see here for the true regression model where y sub i will equal an intercept beta naught plus a estimated beta coefficient beta sub f for the indicator variable for former smokers, a beta l times the indicator variable for light smokers, and beta sub h times the indicator variable we've defined for heavy smokers, plus that error term where again we will assume epsilon i is distributed as a normal distribution with a variance of sigma squared y given x. We can also draw a direct connection between the way we set up the hypothesis test for the ANOVA test earlier and the way we specify it for an overall F test for our linear regression model. Remember a few slides ago, one of the ways we can specify that ANOVA hypothesis is that the means are all equal to one another. The equivalent overall test in our regression framework that we've discussed previously is seen below, where really we're testing things in terms of the beta coefficients. The overall F test looks at the question of, is anything in this model useful at predicting our outcome or the relationship with birth weight or Y? To make this connection, we can follow two simple steps. In step one, we will add the intercept term to this null hypothesis, and so we see here that we just add plus beta naught to each one of our terms, including the zero at the end. At this point, we can make some connections to what we discussed previously in the lecture on categorical variable specification, where we can specify that definition for the group mean. In other words, we know that the mean for former smokers can be represented here by the combination of beta sub f plus beta naught. And likewise for light smokers, heavy smokers, and then non-smokers just being that beta naught coefficient. With this though, we can make that direct connection between these two approaches to see that we really are testing the exact same thing. So let's see how we can do this in R and look at comparing the output to actually verify that it's equivalent. Again, there's a few ways we can do this. Um, one way is to specify in our data frame um, an indicator variable for each one saying well is that mom smoke categorical variable equal to former light or heavy. We would then just fit our linear regression model for example using LM and we would just for our three predictors put in those indicator variables. One nice thing to note though in R is that we can also equivalently just give it that variable which will work and make an automatic sort of factor or character of the categories for us because R will coerce that variable if it's a character string or a factor into this sort of dummy coding or indicator variable framework. Looking at our summary of LM1 from the previous slide, we can compare it to our previous one-way ANOVA results where we observed that critical F statistic of 4.4076 where we had 3 and 23 degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.01371. We again can note we have all of our 
beta coefficients here where we could add the intercept in each of our respective beta hat coefficients to derive that estimated sample mean for each group. But of interest here, we can compare that in fact, our F statistic from the LM model does match our F statistic from the one-way ANOVA, and our p-value has that direct connection here between our results, showing that they are in fact equivalent ways we could approach the problem, either using a one-way ANOVA approach or specifying it in terms of our linear regression model framework. This then leads us to one question that may come up, which is what do we do if we actually don't believe we have equal variances within each of the groups that we have to consider and compare the means for? There's two parts to this. One is that we actually can formally test this assumption of equal variances using tests such as Levine's tests or Bartlett's tests for the homogeneity of variance. For both of these tests, the null hypothesis is that the variances are equal across groups. So if we have a significant p-value, we would reject H0 and conclude that the variances were not equal. If our variances then are not equal across the groups here, we could use an approximate f-test that was originally proposed by B. L. Welch and published in 1951 to implement what is commonly known as Welch's ANOVA. This is an ANOVA that does not assume equal variances and can be thought of as an extension of the two sample t test that also doesn't assume equal variances. However, in this case, we have more than two groups. What we see here is a little screenshot from that original 1951 paper in Biometrica from Welch that shows how you can derive these properties and do the calculations. Luckily, in our case, we can rely on R, SAS, or other statistical software to do this for us. For example, if we're using SAS, we can specify these tests of the homogeneity of variance using HOV tests in PROC GLM. We can also specify the Welch's ANOVA to come out with just the Welch statement. In R, we have a few options for how we can test these assumptions as well. Using the CAR package, we can use Levine test, or we can use a Bartlett's test from the base default stats package. And then we can fit the Welch's ANOVA with our oneway.test function from earlier, but in this case we're going to specify var.equals is false. On the following slides then we'll see the results of these homogeneity of variance tests and our Welch's one-way ANOVA. So first we can see that in both of these cases our again null hypothesis is that the variances are equal and we see that we have very large p-values in each case. So we would conclude that we failed to reject H0, and therefore we would assume that the variances may be equal. A few notes just to make here about this point. Um, one thing about the Levine test is that if we want to match the SAS output, we would need to add the argument center equals mean to that function. Another thing to note as well is that we do have slightly different p-values with these two approaches, and so it is possible that you could result in a different conclusion in the two. But let's assume here, for the sake of illustrating Welch's one-way ANOVA, that we're still not entirely convinced that the variances are equal, or maybe in this case, because our sample sizes are pretty small for each group of the number of infants we have, maybe we just don't entirely believe the variances might be equal. So in that case, we may wish to do our Welch's one-way ANOVA to address that concern about variances that are not equal or are heteroscedastic. And we see here that using the oneway.test gives us this very simple, concise piece of output where we see, again, we have a critical statistic. We now see that our degrees of freedom are different from before, with our denominator having that fractional or proportional component there based on that complex gnarly equation derived by Welch. However, of primary interest, we'll be interpreting our p-value here, where we can note that since p equals 0.024 is less than 0.05, we will reject H0. And therefore, we conclude that at least one of our groups does have a different mean birth weight um, compared to the other groups. A few closing comments for this lecture to keep in mind. In general, always applying Welch's method for a one-way ANOVA when the equality of variances is unknown is a good strategy. 
In the case where we have homogeneous variances, the standard and the Welch's one-way ANOVA will be essentially the same, and so we only really hedge against the fact that we may not have equal variances. Alternatively, we could actually try transforming our outcome, for example, taking the log of our outcome to make it more normal um, and have potentially equal variances, or we could try fitting those unequal variance t-tests on all pairwise comparisons and doing some form of a correction for doing all those pairwise tests. We should also note that many times we're not just interested in just a naive comparison or an unadjusted comparison of the group means, but may, we may wish to adjust for other continuous or categorical predictors as well. This makes our regression framework that we've introduced previously very flexible, especially if we want to add continuous predictors because ANOVA does not facilitate that adjustment. We can also note that right now we've only really addressed the question of is there at least one different mean across all of our groups, but not specifically which mean is different. To do this, we'll follow up in the next lecture with some post hoc testing approaches to actually evaluate this specific question.